Hi there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and in this video we're going to do a brief demonstration of the new Adobe Camera Raw preset system that we have here from SLRLounge.com. This is the version 5.1 preset system that is compatible with Adobe's Creative Cloud and CS6 applications. However, remember that since the raw editing engine, the process version is different for these two programs, you won't be able to use these presets on CS5 or older applications. So with that in mind, let's jump right in here. I've got a bunch of different photos. I'm just gonna filter the yellow photos here and hit Control A or Command A to select them all. And let's just double click them to open them in the camera raw interface. Now, this is what the camera raw interface looks like. Now, if the window isn't full screen, it's probably because you haven't hit full screen mode, which is this little box right up here, or just hit F. Now, your next question is probably, where are the presets? Well, they're over here in this tab on the right called the presets tab. It's got a little, it's got an icon with a little sliders. Here's all of the presets. Let's just go down. Uh, I want to demonstrate editing this image. First, let's zero out everything. And I'm just going to click camera raw defaults here on this image, or you can just just hit reset all right here, camera raw defaults, and that'll do the same thing. But let's look through the list here and just talk about what we have. We have base soft presets. These are all our base presets. We have soft stylized, vivid, and vivid stylized. These are your base presets, and you want to pick a preset based on what you want the overall look of the image to be. If it's a portrait, if there's skin tones in the image and it's, you know, the face or the skin is this close to the camera, then you probably want a soft or a soft stylized foundation upon which to build. Or, for example, if you have this image here where it's a guy, you know, guys can look a little bit more toned if you crank up your clarity, so it's not actually that bad of an idea. Let me click reset all. This image might look great with a vivid preset. So just keep that in mind. The vivid and the soft presets don't necessarily mean use these on portraits and never use these on portraits or you know vice versa. They just give you an idea of what the overall pop and clarity will be on the image. So for example, for this image, I would probably start with this vivid preset and then maybe I would go over here and just dial down my exposure a little bit and that's probably it. I love the image right here just like that. This sunset is so gorgeous that it really speaks for itself and you know the action going on here. Uh, I really don't feel like doing anything special or stylized to this shot. So let's go back to this one. This one is a very good candidate for some sort of bright, warm, vintage fade. And to do that, I'm going to go to the preset system here. Let's start by just doing the soft import. And you can see the image got a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more gentle and soft, but it didn't you know, overcook the saturation in the skin tones or anything. If you want, you could do extra soft and that looks really nice. It's you know flattering, but obviously it needs a little bit more work overall, maybe brightening up. Of course, we'll get to that in a second. However, for this particular image, I know for a fact that I really wanna do something stylized. So let's just go through and look at what the soft stylized processing would be. This one's a little bit too bright and faded. I'm going to try the neutral fade or the filmic color. Now personally I'm going to just go with a punchy fade skin desat because I don't want that grainy look and, and I do want the image to be punchy but I want to have that subtle look to the shadows so that they just clip, a, you know, they fade it just a tiny bit. So this looks good. Let's move on down the line and see what we want to accomplish. The next thing are your curves. We're going to work in a four step process. B C A S is the acronym that we use base, curves, adjustments, and special effects. B C A S. So the next thing we want to do is tweak our curves a little bit. Actually, you can sometimes go out of order. Let's say, let's scroll down here just a little bit further to the very next thing in the adjustment section, adjust exposure. I'm just going to bump this up to plus one because I already know this image was seriously underexposed and I can't really get a good idea of what I want it to look like without first correcting that exposure. So now that the image is this bright, let's go back up and let's pick a curve. I know for a fact I want to do it warm, but you can see here we've got neutral curves that will do things to fade the overall image, but it won't bump it in the warm or cool direction. So for example, a neutral punch, you know, give it a little bit of a cross processing or a vintage punch, you know, give it a little bit more fade compared to a neutral punch. However, like I said, I definitely want to go in the warm direction here. So here's my warm curves. You can see this whole section. I'm going to go to the same thing, the neutral punches and the vintage punches. 
but I'm gonna try these amber apricot. I love these two right here. I also love these two down here. This one looks great. I really love the overall look. However, it seems like the image is almost a little bit too desaturated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to the adjustments, which is the next step in the workflow process. And usually, honestly, you should not have to adjust most or any of these if you pick the right preset in the first place. The base presets should set the foundation for almost all of these options. And if you're tweaking all of these settings here, these presets, then you're probably doing something wrong as far as picking your original foundation. As a good general rule, you should really only have to use these adjustments if, of course, you nail your white balance and your exposure in the first place. You should really only have to use these adjustment presets once every five to 10 images to correct minor issues or details that are unique to that particular image. So for example, in this image, I'm gonna scroll down here and adjust my saturation. I'm just gonna, because this is only going to adjust the saturation, I'm just gonna start clicking. I wanna see what saturate light looks like. Wow, that's way over the top. Because remember, I already have other processing applied to this image to kind of enhance it overall. So what I probably want to do is do a skin desaturate something like this, skin desat. The D red is going to remove a little bit of red from skin tones, for example, but it will leave other tones like greens and blues intact. So for example, this is what I want right here for this image because I want these greens to stay a little vibrant. But on the other hand, I don't want her skin to look like it's neon orange or something. You know what I mean? So this right here is pretty much perfect. Moving on to the final step, the special effects, there are a few things that you could do. Artistic vignetting basically is the main thing. Or if you want to add grain, you can do that. Let's say I want to add a light radial vignette, maybe a medium. No, light is great right there like that. Or if you wanted to go for that high key look, I could zero this out and I could do a reverse vignette to really brighten it up overall. Personally, this is much more my style. I don't really like that vignetted look. I think that's kind of like early 2000s when people were just discovering Photoshop and they were vignetting everything, you know. So I like a bright reverse vignette on a lot of these types of daytime images. So that's about it. Last but not least, if this image weren't already very warm, I could use some color scheme presets to do some split toning on this image. For example, if I wanted to, you know, tweak the colors just a little bit, this is clearly going in the direction of that, you know, faded film preset look. I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna hit Control Z. Let's try some of these other ones. Obviously, these are very specialized and based on your own particular style as a photographer. I don't really think any of these are necessary because I believe the image stands on its own two feet without it, so I'm just gonna reset the color toning right there. There's always a reset preset at the beginning of each category of presets, so keep that in mind. And that's about it. This is uh, all we've got, and this image looks great. And that was a good in-depth demonstration of how the preset system works. But let's look at how it works if you want to go for speed. I was describing every single step I was doing for this image, and I was taking my time to show you all the different options. But let's say I want to retouch this image, and I want to do it fast. Okay, so let's zero this out. I'm gonna go camera raw defaults. Now let's just try the presets. So I'm gonna go straight to the base vivid presets here and I'm just gonna click HDR max color. Boom, right away it looks great right off the top. And I'm just gonna bump up the exposure by a half a stop and honestly, that's it, I'm done pretty much. Let's try this black and white portrait image here. I'm gonna click zero out and reset all the camera settings here. Again, think about your goal, your objective with an image before you start. For example, I know I want a moody black and white look for this portrait, so I'm gonna hit light crush B and W. Let me hit U and O keys so that I can see my clipped blacks. Now I see that I've got some clipped blacks here, obviously there's a whole ton. So again, I'm just going to hit it, bump it up on the exposure right there, that looks good. Maybe dial it back a tiny bit on the blacks, maybe get the highlights down a tiny bit, and there, I'm done. You can see how this system is taking just a few seconds to achieve the look I wanna do. Let's try this image here. I'm gonna do camera raw defaults again. Let's go to the presets, let's just do a light crush. Actually, you know what, since they're very far away in the image, I don't really want a soft preset. I'm probably gonna go for a vivid preset. Let's do light crush color. There we go, that looks amazing right out of the box. If I wanna do a little bit of burning and dodging, I'll just hit K, or if you need it, the brush tool is this one up here. Again, you can see it says K, so I'm just gonna hit K to get the brush. And then the brush presets are right here in this menu. Burn, darken, one stop, and there we go. I'm just gonna burn in this lower area here. 
get that a little bit darker, maybe this a little bit darker there. And then I'm gonna click new so I can double down on that particular area right there in this corner right there, maybe right there as well. And then I'm gonna click new again, I'm gonna hit the preset, I'm gonna do a brighten by a half a stop just so that I can reduce this vignetting in the upper corner here a tiny bit. It's actually not vignetting, it's just the dark sky around the moon. So I'm gonna just click that, click that a little bit, you know, brighten up that sky a tiny bit. And there, I'm done. Again, it was only, you know, a few second process, even while talking it through with you folks. So that's about it, there you have it. Those are the global presets. I'm gonna hit H here just to go back to the presets. The presets for global adjustments are all right here in this tab on the right hand side and the local adjustment presets or the gradient presets, if you wanna do a graduated filter, for example, are all right here. You can just hit G or K for the brushes and the graduated filters. So for example, if I wanted to do that. And that's about it, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next tutorial video.